Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping into a beer, yet again from a brewer I have never tried in any other offerings from prior. Um, this brewery is called East End Brewing Company. They're based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And today we're jumping into a beer called Gratitude. This is a 2020 release of their Gratitude, which is a yearly recurring uh, barley wine that they produce. This one clocks in at 11.2% ABV. Now, I do know about this beer. They have a lot of different versions. They do uh, various types of barrel aging. This is their standard barley wine, just the base beer, no barrel tricks or any, not that it's a trick, but just the base beer. So a really good test to see exactly what their barley wine is about. And this one is a little bit older. It's aged a little bit, so I expect it will have mellowed a little bit. But nonetheless, we're gonna jump in and try a barley wine uh, as a first beer from a new brewer. It is my favorite beer style, and what a great uh, way to test out a new brewer's uh, skill here. Uh, gratitude on the label, it's got this purple bird sitting on a branch. Not sure the relevance of that, how it uh, <laughs> relates to the name, but that's uh, what they have on there. And a nice uh, purple dipped wax, purple wax dipped top as well to go along with kind of the color theme on the label. So I can tell you this wax is quite uh, tight to kind of dig through here. I've got my old trusty pointed end of my bottle opener, but this is really, really hard wax. All right, we finally got enough wax cleared, so let's get that pride off. Clean up the edge as we always do it so tight, there's really no small bits, but just in case we don't get wax down in our glass, we're using our uh, stout glass works well for barley wines. I do not have a dedicated barley wine glass yet. Maybe one day I shall. All right, as I pour this, this looks a classic caramel colored barley wine. That is kind of the standard hue, this kind of caramelly color. They can run the gamut. I have had very, very pale barley wines. I have had pitch black barley wines and everything in between, but this is rather the default standard hue of a barley wine. I can tell you, it's already got a very pungent aroma that is wafting out of that glass. I smell a lot of candied fruit. I'm smelling a lot of caramelization. It smells great from even a foot and a half away. So yeah, visually, this is a true uh, caramel color. It's exactly as I expect. This is the exact hue that I think in my head when I picture a barley wine. They can be any shade, but this is the norm. This is kind of the OG standard barley wine hue here. It looks fantastic. This one also formed a very nice, thick, creamy head. Barley wines are all over the board. They tend to be very active in terms of uh, carbonation, high BV beers, uh, obviously gives plenty of food for use, eat, uh, yeast to eat, create extra carbonation. Uh, but this one kept really fine, nice, tight uh, effervescence as it came up, made this nice creamy head. This uh, easily looks like it could have been pulled from a tap. But let's get right up for a sniff. Oh yeah. Oh, that smells fantastic. So the, this one is definitely a more fruity kind of nose on it. I'm definitely getting some toffee and uh, caramelized sugar kind of vibes, but there's a lot of uh, fresh fruit. It almost smells like baked goods, like, like apple pie or peach cobbler, maybe a combination of the two. Even has uh, some bright fresh citrus, almost lemony kind of aroma to it. So it's got a very kind of fruity side on the nose. It smells fantastic. And you don't get that all that often. You normally get the kind of rich caramelized baked good fruit side, but to have such bright fresh fruit, like fresh apples and lemon zest, that's uncommon in a barley wine. And I gotta say, it smells really, really nice. So I don't know what to expect when I jump in, but we're gonna do exactly that. Here we go, take one. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh wow. Wow. Ooh, there's a lot happening in this beer. I am really surprised by this. Very, very pleasantly so. So this to me is reminding me of a cross between a couple different beer styles, maybe even a third. But let me go in and tell you exactly what I'm experiencing here. So a lot of what you get on the nose does translate into the glass, but there's a lot happening in that glass that nothing you get on the aroma can even prepare you for. 
there is a very, very dominant, large, very upfront and center presence of bitters. Very, very bitter. Um, this would actually put to shame a lot of West Coast IPAs I've had with this bitter profile. The IBUs definitely have to be up there on this beer. That is very, very rare for barley wine. And what that does with the inherent kind of layering and flavor and aroma profile, ABV range, it kind of puts me in mind a lot more of, say, um, a strong ale. Think uh, Stone Brewing Company Arrogant Bastard. Um, that is kind of the vibe I'm getting. If you were to take a standard American barley wine, cross it with uh, Arrogant Bastard, that's starting to approach, like if you blended those two styles together, that's starting to approach kind of the beer drinking experience I'm getting out of this. And I mean that in the best way possible. Um, barley wine is in general my favorite beer style of them all. But uh, I'm not sure uh, if I ever mentioned this on this channel, maybe intentionally I didn't, but my absolute, if you were to ask me point blank, what's the best beer you ever had? What's your favorite? My favorite beer in the world is Stone Brewing Company's Arrogant Bastard. I think for me, for what it is and how it's pulled off, that is just about as close to beer perfection as it gets. It's got a little bit of everything that I crave the most uh, across multiple different beer styles in one. Um, so yeah, using that as kind of a, a descriptor for what I'm experiencing is really, really high praise for me. So really complex, big, big, big beer. This is a pint and some odd ounces. It's a big bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and top this off just a little bit. I'm gonna jump back in for a second sip. There was a lot to process. It is very complex. Um, so we're gonna jump back in. I'll talk about the body and the mouthfeel. We'll really pick apart the minutia of uh, what's coming through flavor profile wise. And we will talk about the finish that I can already tell you is extremely long. So take two. Wow, yeah. Ooh, big beer. So body and mouthfeel wise. Mouthfeel wise, it's got a good bit of resistance. It's a barley wine after all. Maybe a little bit in the lower end for your average barley wine, but 11.2%, it's not a low ABV. So sure, it's got some resistance. It's above average, but it's not super top tier. I would say the same is true with the body. It's pretty robust, but it's really just medium, medium heavy. It's not as weighty and oppressive as you would expect on 11.2%. So maybe some people would find that a negative. I actually like it because uh, the texture and the weight of it doesn't get in the way, as it were, of letting you prep kind of your brain and your palate and your senses for what you're about to get as soon as you swallow, because it's huge. And, and I keep coming back to this. The burst of bitters, is just immense. And this is like, if you took a fuggle hop that was on the intensity of, I don't know, a Magnum or a Simcoe or a Citra or something like that with those really high alpha acid contents, uh, but without like the citrusy and pine vibes, just that classic earthy profile, but really pungent, that is what is coming through in this beer. And it is ab absolutely incredible. And this really opens up into um, kind of the, the toffee and the caramelly and the richness and the buttery side of it. So it still does have this very distinct caramelly and butter toffee kind of vibe to it. I'm not getting a ton of caramelized sugars, but I'm getting a lot of intense earthy bitters mixed with this caramel and this buttered toffee. And how I got a bunch of uh, kind of lemon zest bright citrusy notes and like fresh apple or apple juice kind of on the nose. I'm not getting anything like that on the flavor profile side, but it does have a lot of these classic kind of cobbler like fruit cobbler baked good qualities. So it's kind of this richness um, of this caramel and the buttered toffee mixed with these kind of fruity accents that kind of put you in mind of cobblers, but then with this just big intense earthy bitterness and once you kind of get past the 30 second mark, that earthy bitterness does start to open up into some almost West Coast style IPA 
kind of vibes with its kind of resinous qualities that really start to pop out as well. I am really, really surprised by this beer. Pleasantly, pleasantly so. I did not expect this at all. Um, honestly, I expected this to be fine, a barley wine. I really just expected it to be kind of run in the mill. This is a very, very special beer. Um, I am absolutely blown away by this. Uh, gosh, if I had known this was going to be this really spectacular, I probably would have had this weeks and weeks ago, but I'm not disappointed that I saved it for now and didn't research beyond. I just know it's a new beer from a new brewer and a barley wine. Wow, I am blown away. So before I wrap this up and uh, get to taking my time and getting my scores, let's talk about the finish. The finish on this beer is extraordinarily long. Um, maybe you would already suspect just based on the things I said about it, but the bitter intensity on this is real. It is huge. It has a huge bitter profile. I, I'm not kidding when I say this. I would say this is easily, perception-wise to me, top 10 most bitter forward beers I've ever had in my life. This puts most West Coast style IPAs to absolute embarrassment. It is so bitter forward. The, the, the hop bitters coming out of this beer are beyond intense. And I think it is absolutely glorious for it. So very, very long finish. It really extends the length. This is not dry at all. It's very wet, it's very round, and it's very, very present, lingering, hoppy bitter flavors on the back of the profile. That is still actually in tandem with a lot of the malt bill side of that kind of caramelly and toffee note um, that still lingers pretty long. The bitters from the hops far outlast that flavor profile, but it has really impressive mileage. This is just a top tier beer. I didn't expect it. I'm absolutely blown away. I absolutely love this. I will sip on every last drop of this. You can bet on that. And when we come back, we will get this beer ranked from top to bottom. All right, so now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're gonna get it ranked. This was East End Brewing Company's Gratitude. 2020 release of their barley wine that they release annually. This one clocks in at 11.2% ABV. This was the standard barley wine. They have a bunch of different types of barrel aging. This was just the standard. Uh, East End Brewing Company is based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So uh, this is just a really incredible beer. It far surpassed any expectation I had on it. I didn't do any research. I just said, oh, here's this barley wine I set aside. It's not barrel aged. I always like to try just a standard barley wine to, to you know, see what any offering is from some brewer. So this was a double win for me. First beer from a brewer. I'd never had uh, anything from them prior. And then jumping into a standard barley wine, my favorite beer style. So this beer uh, almost got a perfect score in all categories. There were only two where it did not, and they are related categories. Uh, that is the body. The body on this, it was definitely above average. It was a big beer, pretty robust, 11.2% ABV, but the body didn't have quite the heft to it you would expect maybe for 11.2 for like top tier status. It was certainly above average for the ABV range, but not top tier. The body gets a seven out of 10. The mouthfeel was very much a similar story. It did have some natural resistance. It is a barley wine after all, 11.2%, that's not a low ABV, uh, but it wasn't quite as resistant as you would expect for barley wine in that ABV range. Yet again though, still above average, the mouthfeel on this one also gets a seven out of 10, which uh, gives a perfect 10 out of 10 in all of the other remaining categories. That's the aroma, the taste, the finish, the head and retention, appearance, balance, feeling and intangible, and example of style. So the total score on Easton Brewing Company's 2020 release of Gratitude came out to a 94 out of 100. So well above average, and saying that really is not even telling the whole story. Um, my, my initial thoughts on this is I was experiencing it for the first time in second sip, I stand by that. So this may not have gotten a perfect 100, uh, not many beers that I've reviewed to date have made uh, that really uh, kind of top tier status for the scores because I have to rate the beer based on what I experienced firsthand. That being said, for my money, 
a slightly less robust body and slightly less resistant mouthfeel on a barley wine than I anticipate for an ABV range is really negligible in the grand scheme of what I think about the beer. And indeed, if you were to ask me point blank, uh, what are your thoughts on this beer in general? I would say unquestionably. For me personally, this is one of the top 10 best beers I have ever had in my life. I absolutely loved it. Uh, subjectively, I would give this a perfect score all day long. I did, um, but I had to rate the body and the mouthfeel, uh, how it came out, what I experienced. But I absolutely loved this beer. If you uh, like Arrogant Bastard by Stone Brewing Company and you like barley wines in general, this is absolutely one you've got to try. I mean, the commonalities between this, I, I am not kidding. It blows the hop intensity and bitter forward nature of many, many, many West Coast style IPAs to absolute shame. That paired in a beer that shares a lot of commonality in the flavor profile with Arrogant Bastard, a big, big, big strong ale, uh, and in a barley wine package, this beer had a ton going for it. It was absolutely beyond the complexity I ever would have guessed, and I loved every drop of this thing. I wish I had ordered at least five bottles of this. It's that good. I'm gonna have to search high and low to see if I can find this being sold anywhere, or the next time Tavalor pops it up, grab whatever my limit is, cause I absolutely loved it. Folks, that is today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you wanna stay in the loop when our videos go live, just turn on your notifications, hit that bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.